Uh, so let's talk a little bit about just how it all started. Tell me, Tom, about um, your childhood, how you got into comics, that kind of like, how did this all begin? Start, start in the beginning. So just yeah, my it. childhood. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> from the beginning, I mean, you know, just uh, I, I was into comics. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, just going to like, you know, the bookstore and there being the, you know, cover, you know, things with like covers ripped off and stuff mm -hmm. and, and seeing like the different Marvel digests, like it was like the little digests. And so the yeah. and there was like, you know, Howard the Duck and there was Star <laughs> Wars and things like that. And, and yeah. just um, those are probably like my earliest memories of like, you know, seeing seeing comics and um, I just I, I, I think it was I was more like really drawn to like superheroes and yeah. um, you know the super friends and spider-man like all the cartoons like mm -hmm. on tv and, and the superman the um uh george reeves uh, uh, uh superman tv yeah. show and all that kind of stuff and yeah. and then yeah the you know um i mean when i was just really little that's when the christopher reeves superman was out and and there was adam west reruns yeah. on tv oh, yeah. so it's just like sort of superheroes everywhere mm -hmm. And yep. I was just like really into that, and and in, and um, <clears throat> and you know, Sid and Marty Croft shows, and um, Star Wars, just all this stuff. So it was just this like very like vivid, colorful, you know, fantasy mm -hmm. world that yeah. was sort of everywhere. And then, um, uh, you know, it, it was there was only so much of that. Like those shows were on at certain times and like the yeah. movies, you'd have to you'd have to go to the movies to see them. Yeah. <clears throat> this, I mean, this was probably before we even had a VCR and stuff. So, and then comic books were like the way that you could connect with that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, at your leisure, you know, right. on your own. Like, um, uh, you know, in, 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 you know, all that, all the rest of the time that you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, be a part of that stuff. And, yeah. and then, and of course you, you'd read the comics. Um, and it, it, this might've, I might've even been pre-literate at this time, you know, just kind of like mm -hmm. looking at the pictures and things, but right. you could immerse yourself in these, in these worlds. That was, yeah. that was like the gateway in. What, uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my dad uh, is a teacher, high school teacher. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's, that's like what he was for, for his, his whole career. And, um, and my mom, was a uh, uh, she worked in medicine. She was a medical technologist, and then mm. uh, I, I mean, at, at this time, we're talking about you know she was just uh, she was you know uh, home homemaker, housewife, oh, or yeah. whatever. But yeah. but uh, you know, not too long after that, yeah, she she yeah. became a medical technologist, and then a eventually a uh, physician's assistant. Okay, when you, I'm assuming uh, you started kind of having an aptitude for art, for drawing, you know, I, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I love Spider-Man and Batman, right? The Batman, mm -hmm. uh, Adam West stuff, and I would draw, you know, little comics and little stories and stuff. Did you, did you start doing that? And when you were doing that, uh, were your parents supportive? Did you kind of feel like you had a, a support or mentor as an early age before say high school and then on to on the college? Well, when, when we were kids, um, you know, we we're just drawing all the time and, mm -hmm. um, and I, and like, yeah, I did have an aptitude for it. And my, my mom was, um, you know, she had a, an aptitude for drawing and mm. she, you know, she would draw, you know, she, uh, uh, but this was like very, very early. Like she would uh -huh. draw pictures, she'd draw pictures of my dad. She'd draw like portraits of my dad. Okay. And to me, they were just like the most realistic drawings of it. None of this stuff exists anymore. I'd love yeah, to see one of those, but they just don't exist. Cause she kind of left that behind, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't too long before she kind of like just sort of left that stuff in the past. But I think it left enough of an impression that like, yeah, I was, I was drawing too. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, um, you know, I, I won a, a poster contest and things. So there were, there were these, you know, early, uh, you know, gleamings that like, oh, okay, this, this kid could have a career in the arts. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was, that was supported. I mean, um, yeah, just, just thinking back and, and we had a lot of, we had a lot of art in the house. Mm. Like my parents were fans of art and okay. we'd have a lot of, you know, watercolors and paintings and things from, mm. 
you know, people they knew, like, like, right. uh, you know, art student, you know, art students or, or people who are, you know, so we had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just art around where, where you could, you know, see yeah. the, the hand and, and maybe even know the person who made it. That's cool. Uh, we, yeah. also, we also had a, uh, we, we had a, Mo a Mona Lisa, a copy of the Mona Lisa That's in our cool. house, which I thought was the real Mona Lisa. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I, I've noticed that, I mean, we are definitely products of our upbringing and yeah. that that early environment, whatever that is, if it's very kind of art positive, you know, my grandparents, my mom was a painter. So like you just you just kind of fall in that world. You feel kind of like that's a safe space or, or you just have more of a understanding of it because of the exposure. When you went to school, it looks like go up a couple of years. University of Pittsburgh. What was your major? Was it art or um, it was art? Yeah, was it? Mm -hmm. Were you thinking comics back then or were you thinking fine art or teaching? Where were you kind of like leaning towards? I mean, co comics were a possible, like I, I, you know, was kind of looking at a bunch of things and comics was mm -hmm. one of them. It wasn't sort of the main thing. I, I don't know that I was really that career focused. I just sort of had mm -hmm. a vague idea of doing something art related. I always assumed that it would translate into some sort of like Hollywood career, that it would right. be either like storyboards yeah. or, uh, you know, concept art for, mm -hmm. for, you know, for, for movies or animation that, right. that it would, but again, I had just the vaguest idea. Like there wasn't much of a plan in place, just that mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted to, I wanted to get good at it. I wanted to develop the skill, but I, I wasn't, um, and, and I didn't really have, uh, you know, I, there, there wasn't, much of sort of like a mentor because I just had this mm -hmm. vague idea of what I wanted mm -hmm. to do and there there wasn't really anybody around me who could who could help me the way that like I could help somebody now like if somebody yeah. said to, like and you know I'd say well what exactly do you want to do right and then if if you did want to do something you know related to film production or something then mm -hmm. you know find a place for that where I was right. just kind of like okay I'm learning art you know and and I'll do something with it right yeah. Um, and so when you were there, tell me about, so would you recommend, tell me a little bit about your thoughts of, of going to school for art, because it's kind of, um, it's kind of like film school in a way. It's like, well, yeah. you know, it's a lot of money, but it's good to have some connections. I mean, what's your kind of thought on people who want to go into art? Do they need to go into school? What's your kind of thought on that? Well, yeah. And I was, I was taking a lot of film classes oh, too. Okay. like I was making making movies making animation mm. and, and you know just just doing all of it just wanting some kind of creative career somewhere um I had a really good experience with it I um like even though I did have all this you know showed some skill in drawing and things like that it um you know my parents were never like oh we should enroll you in this program or that it was just kind of like oh that's something that Tommy's good at and you just mm. sort of you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen where now I like, mm -hmm. I have a different attitude towards it where it's like, try to, yeah, you know, you know, find the direction, you know, for things. But um, I, I, so I learned so much in college about drawing and art. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was pretty, pretty, like a pretty raw talent when I started and then really, uh, you know, prospered there and flowered and really, um, you know, just, just learned a lot of, a, a lot about, you know, just making pictures and, and yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, let's talk about film just for a second. I saw the video you did recently on uh, Death Proof. Great film. Yeah. I'm, on, on, I'm on a bit of a Tarantino kick right now. I just read sure. the book, the novelization of um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, you were going to, if I can back calculate your age and everything, were you in college when like Reservoir Dogs was coming out? Was yeah, it, all that were stuff. You right then, all that stuff. Boondock Saints, yeah. like all that kind of like new that '90s kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I, I mean, I was a friend. I think I was a freshman in college. Yeah, I was just starting college when Pulp Fiction came out, and mm. it was you know one of those like you know parent weekends or whatever. And my my parents came to visit, and me and my dad went to see. Pulp Fiction together, oh, wow. like in the theater, and I I passed out during it. Like I was so <laughs> like the the scene where they jab the the needle yeah. in Uma Thurman's Mia. chest was so intense, and I I started oh, yeah. getting kind of like sick 
and then I just kind of went, it went wow. black for for a little bit, wow. and then like that's awesome. you know, so that so like I yeah, I, I always you know think about that. Yeah, with that movie Th- that must have been super energizing and like just like feeling like you're on a cusp of a new wave of yes. innovation and art. I mean, going to school for that must have been really cool, kind of exciting and cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I did my, you know, I had my black and white student yeah. film yeah. with people with guns and coats oh, and, you know, you know, jackets, and, you know, yeah. reservoir dog looking uh, yeah. stuff, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I love French new wave stuff. So I'm actually, I want to make a little like Godard film, you know, black and white. Mm-hmm. I want to do some kind of like a yeah. fun existential thing. Um, so tell me about like, moving from that like you're in the really exciting time right now there's all these things happening in film that's kind of maybe potentially where you're geared towards and then uh, let's go to like the Zerich grant and like what happens there and how do you transition into that into like okay I'm gonna like apply for this grant and maybe this comic will go somewhere yeah it was so like yeah comics was one of my interests and I was reading a lot of comics at that time because like being in Pittsburgh there's like comic stores you know and being Mm -hmm. on campus there's like comic store within walking distance and stuff and so comics was a big interest and it was a possibility but and i was doing animation and stuff Mm -hmm. and i was kind of trying to figure out like oh what's my next project you know little you know school project or whatever i'd I'd work on and it, it you know the 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 animation just was so labor intensive and took so long and i thought you know let me do a comic instead let me you know let me try some comics and mm-hmm. and i knew a couple i had a couple friends who were doing who were like very focused on comics and doing mm-hmm. uh doing comics and stuff and and so like we did i was part of like an anthology with them and then mm-hmm. uh like i learned how to actually like put a comic together how to like you know lay the yeah. stuff out and and so that that became more of a i really liked working that way and and creating something and and uh you know have that end product just that much faster with, you know, and it just, it just felt like, like a way to go. And then just being in that circle, I'd, I'd sort of heard about the Zurich grant mm-hmm. again, okay. like, like, I feel like the, 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 like the friends were like more uh, involved in comics and more immersed in comics and more knowledgeable mm-hmm. about, you know, like the world of comics. So like, they're just sort of, throwing out these things and like Zurich grant was one of the oh you gotta apply for the Zurich mm-hmm. grant you got like and so mm-hmm. then so then I applied for it and 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 got it you know mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and from from that point I was pretty much it's like okay comics this seems like this is yeah. going someplace I'm assuming that was like a wonderful experience your family were like super stoked that now hey this this would be you know successful for our son he can create a career do you feel that th- did that like open doors did you suddenly like you know you email somebody and someone want to talk to you like how did that after getting that did that did you feel that that really kind of helped you um in your career well yeah i mean first of all like my parent my family were not thrilled about it because oh. i was also do i was also doing sort of uh fine art painting around the uh, time yeah and they they th- you know they were much more on board with that and when I sort of put that by the wayside and followed comics, they weren't like they didn't, um, you know, they viewed like they understood and appreciated painting, right? And they did they did not understand or appreciate comics mm. at all. Like you know, uh, sort of looked down on it. But but the paint and I mean and to be fair, my my painting was much stronger than my comics were at that time. I was just mm. sort of. You know, like comics, you're learning a language and it's yeah. like, if you put them next to each other, it's like, okay, well, the, these paintings are so much, you know, just, just yeah. on, on first glance, they're so much nicer than what's going on in the comic. But I just, yeah. like, I, I really felt pulled in that direction. Like, I was really interested in learning comics and getting, getting good mm-hmm. at it. So, so like, I, it, it, um, it took a while before, you know, my parents were kind of on board with, and, and, you mm-hmm. know, eventually they did get there, but it took a while. Um. And, but um, it, it did open doors, uh, you know, and people were receptive. And I, I guess I didn't, at the time, I didn't really appreciate the, the degree to to which it was sort of the zero grant. Like, I mean, it, again, I now I had a, a physical, you know, professional comic yeah. and I had a, a, like I and I had a number of them. I was I was sort of rolling 
you know, yeah. whatever money I made out of each one into the next one. So I did, I had this like, you know, nice little body of work. So that in in itself sort of helps. And, and I sent copies out to a bunch of different people and reached out to different people. And Eric Larson was, was one mm. of them. And, and, um, and he wanted to help me, you know, make the comics that I'd been doing self-publishing with the zero grant. He, he wanted to sort of help me, you know, bring that to image comics to mm, do that. Okay. Like, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, that kind of, you know, le led directly into that. Was that what, what year was that? Was it like nine mid nineties? Like, or... yeah, it was, it was probably, it might've been 2000. It might've been okay. like right at okay. 2000. So you, so this was self-published the, the, the zero grant winner. Uh, and so you, Eric's like, Hey, we'll publish it here at image. That was yeah. an option. That was an opportunity or option. Um, Let's just can we side side yeah, swipe sure. a little bit to the painting because I'm curious about yeah. the painting. Um, as a fan of uh, fine art, tell me a little bit about like uh, some inspirations or some painters that you're really drawn to, and maybe stuff that you kind of like go towards. What kind of um, school of thought are you? Yeah, I mean, I I I was just sort of finding my way through it. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. um, I wasn't you know super. I, like I get, I was kind of just dabbling in different worlds and, and okay. the, I just, uh, you know, enjoyed the application of paint. And I was, I was, and, and again, I was looking at, um, cause this is like, this is like late nineties going into the two thousand. So we're looking at the eighties, the eighties were kind of just behind us. So I was, mm -hmm. you know, looking at Basquiat and things like, and doing you know, Basquiat. paintings like that. Yeah. Um, but then I was also doing sort of, uh, you know, portraiture and, okay. um, and landscape just sort of classical painting mm -hmm. um some somewhere between like a you know like the like the photo realism and, okay. and, and then you know uh incorporating more kind of like gestural abstractions into again i it it was um there wasn't a, like I was I think I was creating like some very beautiful pieces some some things mm -hmm. that that really uh you know were just really nice to look at but I I hadn't figured out like a voice there or like mm -hmm. a framework or like a un unifying mm -hmm. theme to, and I think if I had pursued that I would have eventually gotten I like the yeah. same as with the comics it, it took a while to sort of find a voice to and find your... a focus yeah and mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of applying time to it but I get yeah. I kind of stopped that and and you know went to the comics so I never got to to develop it and I think that was also part of it too like it was so difficult coming up with like what am I going to paint like what's my painting going to be where with mm -hmm. comics once you sort of come up with the general idea like it kind of it, whatever you work on kind of informs what your next thing's going to be because it's part yeah. of a and I wanted to just keep I, I didn't want a lot of downtime I wanted to just mm -hmm. keep mm -hmm. keep moving where again I think that you do you do sort of end up there with comics anyway eventually you do end up in a point of like okay what am I going to do you know yeah uh so so again I I think maybe had I had I stayed with painting that part I would have eventually figured out too yeah. you know and, and maybe even make peace with that but that's just part of the process yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, some of, some of my questions is about that, about finding your project and maybe we'll just jump right there and we'll kind of go back and forth. But so, uh, looking at a lot of your work and by the way, uh, I do want to say a couple of things. One, I did play freedom force. Me and my mm -hmm. friends played it great freaking game. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I remember that art, um, a lot of your work is kind of historical it's you're looking in the past either by style or kind of these uh you know projects like the jack kirby and, and just recently i am stan so tell me about like what is it about history because i feel like you're kind of you go there what is it about that that draws you to history yeah i mean <clears throat> i think that um part of it is just just trying to, to find something that like matters and means something and makes sense so um you know for, for for a lot of my career it was kind of like well if i create something that's kind of new or in this moment it's going to be 
ephemeral and fleeting and be sort of, you know, washed away with, you know, next year's, you know, mm-hmm. hot new thing or whatever. Yeah. But if I, if I kind of ground it in the, the classical in, in mm-hmm. that, that it, it'll actually like sort of mean something. And I, I kind of, you know, looking back, I kind of, I pushed back against that, that idea, but that was sort of, I, I, and, and I don't even know that it was necessarily a, like a stated, uh, uh, you know, intent or, or thought that I had at the time, just kind of looking back and seeing like, it, it feels like that was, that it made something legitimate. And, and mm. you know, if, if I sort of drew in what to me would have been sort of like a natural style or, uh, or a style of, you know, the early 2000s or the late 90s or whatever, it, it would have, you know, I, like, I didn't want that. I didn't, I didn't want mm. my work to look like that. I didn't, I didn't want to be part of that. I, I, you know, but if I drew it, you know, like, you know, Jack Kirby or, or Wally Wood or, or some, mm. you know, then it's like, it's got some, some weight to it. And and that's like real and that's legitimate. And, and, mm. and, and this, I don't know, it, it, like, I just, I didn't want to be part of my time. Mm. I wanted to be, mm. to create work that was part of like a, like a different time. And, and, mm. Now that's that's become part of like my toolbox. So so I, I yeah. you know I know ways to sort of employ that to to make something you know create a different mood. But it's um, it's not like exclusively how I would yeah. you know work going forward. Tell me about like how do you pick a project? Because you know I you know I've got a list of things I like, you know, these different stories, like, should I make that into a book? Yeah. Should I do this into the, you know, how, tell me the process as a creative to just like, okay, I'm going to spend this time to work on this story. How do you like pick that? It's so hard. And and I've, it is. <laughs> I've kind of been, I've been in that for, you know, the past, I don't know, four or five years, you know, just, mm-hmm. just where, it's like, how do you choose a project? And I, and to me, the most exciting part of a project is like the earliest stages. So I have a lot of projects that I've started and then something else interests me more. And then I go over to that. So I have a, a lot, I mean, in the past few years, I have managed to finish some projects and have managed to, you know, get some published and things, but yeah, it, it's, it's really, really hard. In, in the end, it's like, um the projects pick me or something or or Mm -hmm. um or somebody else picks the project so Mm -hmm. uh you know at the very beginning i wanted to make sort of you know kirby-esque science fiction kirby-esque sci-fi fantasy and stuff so that was Mm -hmm. easy enough but but after that it it did it did get much harder and with um and then with uh, like american barbarian it was kind of like, okay, I want to make, I always wanted to make sort of like a, you know, like a barbarian story. So let me do like a barbarian, like, let me just do a great barbarian story that's, mm-hmm. you know, complete. And, you know, so, so I did that. And then once I got that out of my system, I was kind of like, yeah, I like, I don't know. I don't know what else. So, so like, um, mm-hmm. you know, so all, all the things I've worked on have just been things that sort of, you know, fell in my lap or, or mm-hmm. were sort of handed to me. Uh, for the most part. So um, Godland was one where it was like, okay, Eric Larson saying, okay, Tom, you and Joe Casey get together and come up with something. So then that, oh. that's how that happened. We I was going to ask about that. that. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask about how how you interacted with, did Joe approach you or what? So it was Larson that kind of like- Larson put together. us together. And, kinda, okay. yeah. and so we got on the phone and email yeah. and stuff. And like, this yeah. is what sort of came out of that. And then, um, and then, Transformers versus G.I. Joe was John Barber saying, hey, do mm. you want to do a Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover in mm. a Jack Kirby style? Like that was, uh, you know, that was, so that's how that happened. And mm. um, uh, uh, GoBots was one I pitched. GoBots was mm. one where, again, I was in one of those moments where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I'd go on these jogs uh, or I'd go on a long walk or something. And mm. I just kind of daydream, think about different things. And GoBots kept I kept mm. sort of, you know, that kept developing uh, in my mind. And so then I contacted them and said, hey, let's do GoBots. And um, uh, yeah, it, it, it uh, it's really hard. And then, yeah, like the, 
uh, Jack Kirby thing. It was kind of like just it was one of like a bunch of different projects I was working on. And it was kind of other people, you know, just having conversations with people like, yeah, I'm not sure what sh what I should do for my next one. And just everybody like there was just sort of a consensus of like, you know what, the strongest thing you've been working on is that Jack Kirby thing. You should really mm -hmm. pursue that. So it was like, yeah, I guess, you know, you know, and so, um, yeah, it's just, it's just really hard. It's, it's really hard for a while. I would kind of just come up with an idea and then just go with it and see it through to the end. Uh, and so that's when I did, I mean, that was sort of how I did American Barbarian did that. Mm -hmm. And then I did final frontier and then mm -hmm. I did Satan soldier. And then I started doing this sort of like Super Mario Brothers kind of comic, but it kind of, I, I kind of, you know, that sort of ran out of steam because I, you know, go all in, finish this like graphic novel mm -hmm. and then not, not be able to get it published. Yeah. So I thought, okay, like, I don't want to do that. And like, I, I did that too many times and it was, yeah. you know, too unpleasant an experience. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going forward. I'm just gonna, you know, like I'll, I'll work, I'll do this and that, but, um, it would have to be a really special project for me to see it all the way through and then see if anybody wants to publish it. So with the Jack Kirby, it was like, I did 60 pages of it mm -hmm. and then got, got an agent, got a publisher, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then with the Stan Lee, it was like, I did, you know, 12 pages of it and got a publisher for that. So mm -hmm. it's like now, I'm, but occasionally I do finish a work, but it's usually it's maybe like 40 pages or something. It's rare that I'll yeah. do like a full graphic novel. So uh, when you're doing, so let's talk about Penguin, because you just mentioned the yeah. Penny Press. So, and to me, let me say, that is to me the jackpot. Like yeah. the the avoiding the direct market, avoiding some of the drama of these publishers and just going, hey, I'm going to be done by Random House or these big publishers, P Pantheon, uh, Chris Ware style. I mean, that is like, to me, the Holy Grail. That's what you want. Um Tell me about how you were able to get into that meeting. So did you have that work and you needed an agent to then get Random House to kind of like talk to you or tell me, could you kind of like elucidate yeah, I mean, a little bit that process? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I, and yeah, it is. You're right. It is great. Um, how, you know, work. it's 10, 10 speed press, which is uh, owned by Penguin, but yeah, just it, it's, it's been a great experience. I, I still, I love the direct market. And I love that whole world and that's sort of the world I came up through and, 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 and I still, you know, do, do things with it. And I want, I want to be part of that direct market. And, and, and I have another thing coming the the Jack Kirby star warriors, which is, you know, mm -hmm. a direct market book, but yeah, uh, with that, it was like, when I decided like, okay, I'm going to commit to this Jack mm -hmm. Kirby book. Yeah. I, it, I thought like, okay, well that is, you know, all these, you know, sort of sci-fi things and whatnot these like genre exercises um you know like a book publisher in general like that's a tough sell yeah. but a a, a non-fiction you know book a, a you know graphic novel or whatever graphic biography is a much like like that's the perfect thing for mm. you know some somebody like like 10 speed to publish um so i thought well if i do that book that's that's a no-brainer like I, I can sort of pitch it there um but i i also considered you know going through the direct market and doing it that way but my thought was if i'm going to do it through the direct market i want it to be like my original vision which was to have it be a regular comic book have it come out mm. as issues oh, okay. you know and I, yeah. I couldn't get anybody on board with that there were there were mm. companies in the in the direct market who wanted to publish it as an all-in-one yeah. graphic novel but nobody right. wanted to publish it as comic books right uh so I, why was that why was that important to you to do it in, in floppies um that it just uh, well i love that format i love the okay. floppy format and and i i i i felt at the time and i feel i still feel this way and and it kind of it's sort of come to pass but i feel like you can sort of reclaim that comic book that it, it did you know calling it floppies and things it became oh. sort of this disposable thing but i think you can make like a beautiful work of art and that's the perfect format for it you know and, and mm. so many of the comics that i've loved were in that format mm. you know and, mm. and 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 that that you know kind of like how people for a while would focus on let's make let's make a great single let's make you know like mm. a, a single right. or, 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 you know um it, it kind of like that but um 
but yeah, I just thought, well, if I'm going to publish it as an all in one thing, then yeah, the best route would be a book publisher. So let me see if I can get like a book publisher interested. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yeah, the, the book, the comic publishers, I can talk to them directly. I can, I can pitch to them, but the book publishers, you can't, mm -hmm. they, they, they want you to go via uh, an agent. So I, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I need to find an agent. So, and, and then the, the agents, most of them were, were like, you need like a 60 page or, or, or you, you, I forget what wow, it was, 40 page. I forget what it was. It was like, yeah. you know, some, some to, to, to get them to sort of consider you, you had to, now, of course, yeah. I think those are, those guidelines are made for like pros. Like you could maybe right. make a 60 page story, where, but it was like, yeah. but I, I had, I, I had a number of, like I had already started the Jack Kirby thing. So once mm -hmm. I had like around 60 pages, I thought, yeah, let me shop it around. And, and so then I, I was able to yeah. get a, a, an agent and then it just kind of, they they do their thing and it goes from there what's fascinating though is that you didn't want let's just hypothetically you said like top shelf say like, hey top shelf will do it you're like no because i want it in, in the single issues format but then <clears throat> when you went with random house or excuse me uh penguin uh 10 speed press i'm assuming they did not do it in singles no, they didn't. I, they yeah. they <clears throat> like they. I mean, that was that was my thought. Like, I'll go with the comic company if I want it to be ah. singles. But if I want it to be an all, if, if if if, if, if it book. can only be an all in one book, then I'll go then with like got a it. book publisher. Got it. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So because that is greater than Top Shelf, for example. I mean, just uh, yeah. I mean, not to, not to I mean, name them specifically, yeah, but it's sort but of yeah. I, the, and I the, made that up. It's yeah. a different. Yeah. Right. The the um yeah, the book publishing world. Yeah, is is a different animal, and there's yeah. you know, I mean, you're great, target, greater financial right? incentives. Yeah, Ooh, for sure. Like it's not even a question. You know, when right. Lower Olympus, when Lower Olympus is at Target, you know, that's doing yeah. pretty good. So let me just make sure I understand like the the path. A lot of people kind of start in comics. We're gonna kind of talk a little bit more about career and then maybe process. So, um, you know, they start doing hobby. They're like kind of hobbyist. Yeah. They didn't do kind of part time. They got their day job. They're doing comics at night, and then at some point, in theory, they can then become a full time comic artist. Did you kind of skip that? Did you go from zero grant to full time, or did you have some time there where you were like hustling at, uh, you know, wherever as well as doing comics? Like, tell me a little bit about that because that is a struggle that a lot of people are kind of like, you know, that's yeah. that's where you're that's where you're at until you make it no for for a really long time i mean i i was you know working a full-time job and making comics for a really long time like i uh i quit my day job at uh like maybe a year or two before i did transformers versus gi joe that's when i found mm -hmm. so i i was i had a pretty full career up to that point um and, and and when I quit my day job, it wasn't that, oh, comics is going so great. I can quit my day job. I kept hoping for that. I kept hoping to get to a point where the comics thing was getting, you know, was doing so good that it's like, okay, that makes sense. I got, I got to jump. And that, that time just never came. It never, it never mm -hmm. happened. And, you know, with a lot of thought and, and consideration, I, qu I quit my day job with the idea that like, look maybe having a day job is holding me back like i can't let that yeah. if i if i commit myself fully to this thing you know and i've sort of proven that i'm you know willing to do the work like it's not going to just you know i'm not just going to kind of waste away or something like i i i'd sort of proven to myself that, that but it was a hard decision to make because it really went against my grain to like abandon abandon like an actual you know reliable source of income and and just just quit quit your job it was you know really a, a tough decision but it was the right one I, I quit and then all of a sudden it's like okay how do i how do i make my living today and so and so i just kind of you know and and uh you know looked at all the uh it's like okay now before it was like exploring this sort of like independent comics world and you know figuring out you know negotiating that world now it's like okay how do I get into this like comic book business? So I just looked at like the submission guidelines for all the companies. And, and I thought mm -hmm. if I become an inker, that's right. fine. If I, yeah. but just like somehow figure out some way to make a living in comics, you know, to where mm -hmm. it's not this, uh, you know, 
incredibly time consuming side thing, you know, but, but, you know, and, and so, and within, yeah, within like a year, I, I got the Transformers and GI Joe thing. So was that after Godland? That was after Godland. That was after Godland. Yeah. So you were doing, yeah. just, to, just to make everyone aware, you were doing <laughs> Godland, a great book with Joe Casey, rock star, guy with sunglasses. You're, you're making that book and you're still having to throw down a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and that's what's fascinating because I think a lot of people feel, you know, like, oh, wow, he's, he's doing a book for image. It's published everywhere. He's now, you know, at least paying rent. <laughs> and it's like, mm -hmm. no, it's still, you know, there's still some things that have to happen financially to, uh, to be able to do this full time. Yeah, it, it uh, yeah, it just exactly. It's, it's yeah. incredibly difficult. I yeah. mean, looking back, like, I don't, I don't know what to say, like what to tell people, because after I did quit my day job and then like within a year found, you know, like the, the biggest success I'd had up to that point, you know, like, like the, the Transformers thing was very, was very good for me and, and, and kept leading to the next thing. So for a while I was sort of telling everybody quit your day job. Like this, yeah. that's what you got. That was the only thing holding me back is I didn't quit my day job soon mm -hmm. enough. You know? But now looking back, it's kind of like, well, I mean, that's, a, that's very dangerous advice to, to yeah. give people. And, and yeah. unfortunately, I don't think anybody followed my advice, uh, <laughs> but just also, but yeah, looking back at that body of work, like the Godland, and, and I think, I think American Barbarian, I was also working full time when I did mm -hmm. that too. So looking mm -hmm. back at that body of work, it's like, yes, you can create comics and have a day job and have health insurance and this. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah. You got to figure it out. I, I yeah. do wonder though, like if I had the sort of foresight and like quit my day job when Godland first started and mm -hmm. just was able to put, yeah. you know, just my full everything into that, if maybe, you know, something could have happened with that, yeah. in a, you know, in, in a larger yeah. way, you know, to really, you know, it may, maybe, but, you know, it's like you, you take the, you know, you take the path you needed to take to get you, you yeah. know, where you're getting. You just, you just never know. And I mean, the one, yeah. the one great thing about not having the day job, of course, is just the hours, the, the hours to be able to draw. I mean, mm -hmm. if I were to, you know, if you can draw for 10 hours a day, you could draw, you know, 70 hours in a week a lot that's a lot more than you could you know with a day job when you can draw two hours a day so you just yeah the, the amount of the the ramp of speed up of hours which equates to skill and, and talent just increases dramatically mm -hmm. so so that's the to me the big advantage is just you can just get through all those hours of training and learning and being better and better when you don't have to clock in at some other job and only work at night, you know, and then you're exhausted, you come home, you're tired and you got to put in four hours of this drawing and this book, and you know, motivating all that kind of stuff. So um, can I ask, what was your day job? I'm curious about what, what was, what was your other career? Yeah. I mean, I, I was a, a technical illustrator, so I would oh. draw, you know, just, you know, products or what, you know, I just draw okay. like, you know, this or that, you know, it was, um, I mean, it was, I got to draw, you know, I got to, yeah. draw, I got to, you know, make, make art and, and employ, you know, line and color and things like that. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, it wasn't like, I wasn't drawing what I wanted to draw or, right. you know, but, yeah. but yeah. So it was yeah. somewhat parallel. It, it helped, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, your style and what you, I feel kind of, you've doubled down on is this, uh, you know, the Kirby influence, of course, kind of a, a different style. Is there something that you would love to do? Is there another kind of art style or or kind of look that you would love to kind of work on that you just haven't got to do yet or? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, well, I've kind of, um, I, I've kind of like stripped my stuff down like I, I keep stripping it down just wanting to employ this like really direct communication uh and and that's sort of been the traje trajectory I've been on for for a little while but yeah. now I am kind of thinking like I'm really because I love to draw like I love you know and and I I kind of feel like I would like to create something like a little more visually baroque 
Mm. Again, it, it mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I'm start, start, starting to feel like a hankering for that. So like, mm -hmm. I, like, yeah, I, I might uh, inch toward that. It's, it's just, it's just hard because you can, like, I'm so in, involved in like the storytelling and trying to figure out a story and, and stripping it down is so conducive to storytelling yeah. and, you know, Baroque artwork it is not like, like, you yeah. know, it, but again, but again, it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, that, that might be interesting. There, there was, there was a time in trying to like fig, figure out a, figure out a career in comics where I thought, you know, like, should I try to get work drawing like the way people draw like regular superhero comics, like where it is like, mm -hmm. it's very photo referenced, very, yeah. um, cluttered like a lot yeah. got a lot of stuff going on and so, like it's like because i because i always thought like oh well i could do that if i wanted to i just don't want to but then i started thinking like well maybe if that's if that's you know what the market demands maybe maybe try that so i did i i did you know come up with like some samples in that vein and it was mm. kind of fun it was interesting and i i could i could see that being like a really enjoyable challenge to figure that so like I, I guess, yeah, that's that's something I've never done that I think might be fun is to just, you know, draw a comic in that sort of straight up, you know, that yeah. sort of straightforward, just the way a comic book, like the way a superhero comic book looks now. Yeah. And see if I could, you know, put my personality into it. But again, it's like, I haven't, uh, you know, that's not, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that for my own work. But, mm. you know, if, if, if somebody hired me to do that, I would love to, yeah. you know, we'll on their it. dollar, try Get that out, you know? Yeah. I, I would be curious what, how the market would feel like that because um, similar to like film and stuff, I do feel like you do get kind of like, okay, this is the style we want. And when we've seen artists move away from that and try something different, like Keith Giffen, he's done a lot of different stuff, even Frank Miller, when they go against what they're known for, there is this pushback and there's this like, wait a minute, what are you doing? Why are you drawing like Jose Munoz? You draw like John mm -hmm. Byrne, right? Or why are you doing this weird black and white stuff? We know you as the guy who does Daredevil or Dark Knight. So it would be interesting to see you come up with like a, you know, you know, Eric Larson or Jim Lee style and then say like, whoa, what's Tom doing? And why is he doing this? And where's the stuff that we like? You know, it would be interesting to see. Um, See, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to make those changes, and I, I feel like I kind of have. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. it's, maybe the differences between the works that I've done are more pronounced to me than they are to mm -hmm. an outsider. Maybe they look at yeah. it as like, oh, it looks pretty much. But to me, it's like, Godland is very different from American Barbarian. American Barbarian is very different from, uh, uh, Transformers versus GI Joe. Transformers versus GI Joe is very different from GoBots. Uh, GoBots is very different from Fantastic Four Grand Design. Fantastic Four Grand Design is very different from my Jack Kirby book. And then the Stan Lee book is like, uh, is is another depart to me. Like that, the, the mm. Stan Lee book is like the biggest departure that I've made. Mm. So I mean, I'm I'm willing and able and enjoy the idea of of changing a style again because it is it's different. It's like if you're a filmmaker the scale is just different there's you know uh, the the audience is much larger the money mm -hmm. involved is much larger so it is harder to make those swerves but to me comics is still pretty small like even even like mm -hmm. a comic superstar isn't isn't known by that many people compared to you know yeah like a, a movie director or something so so like why not you know you're, yeah. you're like what's what's to lose you know mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah, cool. Let's talk about process. I'm a okay. super nerd for process and comics and things like that. So we talked a little bit about, you know, picking your project and and um, things like that. But let's talk about like story, research, script, art process, all that kind of stuff. So um, tell me about like the researching. Let's just do Stan Lee since we're talking mm -hmm. about that. I saw that documentary on, was it Netflix, Hulu, something like that. I just saw it recently. I don't know if you saw it. Um, I was actually, I thought it was kind of mid, I felt like mm -hmm. it was very, it felt blase to me, just that, I don't know, I, I wasn't, I really loved the visual, uh, three-dimensional models and stuff like that, did you see it? 
I haven't seen you it. You haven't seen no, it. I haven't. Uh, don't bother. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I I feel like I, I I probably should, but there's no reason. Like, if I was still working on the Stanley book, I would definitely check it because I was consuming and like world. any yeah. kind of Stanley. But yeah. but my books, so it's not like I'm gonna learn yeah. something new and then right. change and something. Change, like the book, right. the book's done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and also, kind of like, well, you know, what if it's what if I see it and I get jealous or, you know, what if I see it and I get annoyed or what if, you know, so it's like, there's, there's, there's no, no, you know, the, the, you know, and then even if I, what if I see it and it's bad, it's like, well, then what, you know, what good has that done me? You know, so I just, I haven't, I, I, I figure I will. I just, the the mood has not struck me to to check it out yet. Tell me about though, like the story breakdown. So you, do you first think about, uh, there's a phrase is it format format leads to design i don't know there's there's a phrase something to form follows function yeah form follows function do you kind of think about okay this is a 198 page book it's going to be the size so now this is the kind of story breakdown i need like how do you kind of break down your story uh prior to even the script we're just talking about like story beats and that kind of stuff yeah yeah i mean that you know i just make these you know, documents, you know, like on my phone or whatever. And I just think in terms of like bullet points, you know, and just kind of like, um, oh yeah, this happens and then this happens mm-hmm. and then this happens and and just, you know, put all that stuff together. And then, and then at, at that early stage when you're writing, you're also like, I also do like every kind of writing too. So maybe mm-hmm. I'm writing about what the book's going to be because also you're you're kind of pitching these things at the same mm-hmm. time too so you're you're creating it and you're also trying to find a home for it and mm-hmm. the pitching kind of reinforces it too because as you have mm-hmm. to explain what this yeah. thing is to somebody you get a clearer idea of what it is so yeah. i'm doing all of those things sort of simultaneously and also drawing because sometimes i'm just sort of walking around or something and then i just see a sequence mm-hmm. and then i just sit down and draw out that sequence so it's all, mm-hmm. this patchwork of mm-hmm. all these like different things going on in that mm-hmm. in that early phase did you find in when you're doing kind of this biographical work do you kind of look through and do you pick certain moments when okay he decided to you know he became stand the man he changed his name to this he do you kind of find these big like uh watershed moments or these or these times and that's like your your like beats that okay these are going to be the the chapter marks or how yeah, I mean, you got, you got, in? yeah, exactly. I mean, for, for stuff like that, and with Jack Kirby, it's like, okay, you got to have this, you got to have that, you got to do this, mm-hmm. you got to do this. And, and and then you're filling in the gaps. But also, like, there's a lot of, like, sort of texture and flavor stuff mm. that that I, I really kind of focus on in the early stuff, too. So sometimes I'll get an idea for a sequence that doesn't, mm. doesn't maybe even seem like it's that germane to the story, but for whatever reason... You know, mm-hmm. my unconscious mind is telling me that this is, yeah. you know, and so I'll, I'll sort of have some, so I'll have some of those in my back pocket. And then as I'm developing, it's like, oh, this, this would really fit well in this, at this moment, or, or, or it might turn into something else. Might So I just, I kind of trust my creative instincts, uh, even, mm-hmm. even within something, you know, that's factual like this. Right. Do you, um, are there some scenes where, I mean, I'm assuming that a lot of it is kind of fictionalized dialogue. And this is just like, this is the gist from the books I've read. This is, I think, what happened. And, but I, we're going to kind of like play this the way we think it's kind of mm-hmm. dramatically interesting. Is there is that kind of like the way you do it? I'm just curious about like the level of, you know, uh, fictional fictional kind of elements you put into there and how does that need to be weighed a certain amount versus another or can you just like go go crazy with it do you think about that yeah, yeah and and there are a bunch of different ways that you can do it and I I, I feel like I do tend with both of these works I tended like I erred on the side of caution mm, okay you know like there yeah. there were like some very vivid sequences and conversations and things that I had, you know, that I, uh, you know, that, that, that I had uh, like in my head and I sort of drawn out in my sketchbooks and some really great scenes and things that I ultimately couldn't use. Cause I was like, well, this isn't, this is like this, this is a, you know, if this were a fictional story that I was telling, this would be like a really great moment in it. 
but there's this is you know completely a flight of fancy and so if i were making if i were making a you know jack kirby i don't know like or, or you know like just a fictional like a, a thinly veiled you know with a, a mm. jet you know like um you know if i was doing like a cavalier and clay kind of mm. thing or something mm -hmm. then it's like oh this would be this would be like the best scene in the whole thing but it's like well i can't use it because i i don't believe anything like this ever happened to jack kirby mm. you know so i just have to throw it away um i i feel like there is a world or or there are authors um who might have you know maybe may, you know yeah. maybe used something of that and and put you know and put yeah. it in there but i just i i erred on the side of caution if if i were going to do a third book of this type i might you know be a little more open to figuring out or or come up with like i like come up with some kind of disclaimer or something of like oh you know or, or fictionalized it's just it's mm -hmm. it's hard. then it's something else it's something else yeah. you're not doing and yeah. I, and i wanted to do a biography of jack kirby and i wanted to do a yeah. biography of stan lee and so uh there's just to me there's no room for for that yeah there was a book that howard chaikin um yes made called hey kids comics and hey, he kids lives comics. down he's he lived down the street i was an assistant for him for a little bit and i haven't actually read it but is that but it seemed like he was kind of, I don't even know, is it fictionalized stories yeah. of some of that bullpen things, but it's basically his his history and stories, but just with fictionalized right. names and people? I mean, yeah, from what I understand, like, again, I haven't read it either. I'd like to. It's on my, no, and I've heard great things. I've heard great <laughs> yeah. things about it. And from what yeah. I understand, that that's exactly like what okay. I'm talking about. Like, like he did, yeah, like, like it's fictionalized. So he can... Like, go, uh, you know, or, or or one could use creative license with this stuff. Yeah. And as as a creative person, that's a much more enjoyable thing to do. That's a much more enjoyable thing to do. It's just, mm -hmm. it's it's a different animal. And yeah. uh, um, like, I'm, I'm sure that thing is like very successful for him. But for me, like if I made, you know, Tom Scioli's book about a fictionalized world of comic books, I don't believe that that would have the same impact as here's the story of jack kirby here's the story of yeah. stan lee to me those yeah. things just have so much more impact yeah. than again it, it, it is hard because i i do i enjoy making you know fantasy and make believe you know mm -hmm. and that's a that's been a big like jack kirby and stan lee are the two standout like the two outliers yeah. of my body of work because everything has been all that make believe but the make believe is a really tough sell it's really mm. hard to get mm. readers interested to get publishers interested in your flights of fancy where mm. there will always be a hunger for i want to wow. learn about something that really happened you know that's that's in, that's that's insight i like that Tell me about the art process that you're doing. So it sounds like even when you're doing the story breakdown and the script, you're also kind of maybe doing some some panel compositions or some kind of page layout type stuff. Tell me a little bit about like the physical artwork. Do you do it all physically still or using a Wacom? What are you doing? No, uh, Jack, Jack Kirby was the last or uh, no, Fantastic Four trying to I, I think trying because I was kind of working on those simultaneously but yeah Jack Kirby and, and the the Fantastic Four I did in pencil on paper and um Stan Lee is completely digital I was a... um you know I've done a couple covers and things here and there for various people and and inked some stuff here and there all mm -hmm. digital like it's been it's been digital what, with a digital. Wacom or iPad? Uh, with that iPad. It's, a, it's using, an iPad. Just use an iPad. That's what you're doing yeah. it on. Really? Mm -hmm. With Procreate or what do you use? Procreate. Yeah, exactly. Procreate. iPad Procreate. So you used an iPad Procreate to make I Am Stand. Yeah. What about that's fascinating? <laughs> I think I just feel that that's so powerful, right? Like you can like create. Yeah. It's it's like I can make a movie with my phone. Uh, yes. Um, that's fascinating. Tell me about that transition though, because um, I mean, I, I I have both. I can do both, but I like paper. I just like the the kinetic. I like the feeling mm -hmm. of it. There's just that something about it. Tell me about how you transitioned. Was it because of was it time? Was it just efficiency? Why did you change your workflow? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's a lot of, I mean, it was very, um, it was very seamless. Like the transition was very seamless because it was a little bit at a time. 
Um, and I do like, I, I enjoy, I mean, I used to, you know, ink with brushes and all that. I enjoy mm. all that process stuff, but yeah, I just, I just want to get to the soul of mm. the comic and all that stuff. Mm. I'm, you know, willing to, to start, like, like, again, I, I don't really lose any, like, cause I enjoy drawing on the iPad too. I enjoy mm. the sort of ice skating of mm. this thing across <laughs> glass. Like yeah, I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it, it, I was getting just really, uh, good result like be better results than ever oh. uh and faster, faster. <laughs> so yeah, it was, speed, but, I think but is... what got me there was first i started doing you know layouts and stuff on mm -hmm. on the ipad and then yeah. printing those out blowing them up drawing yeah. them my normal yeah. way yeah, um and, and and then i started coloring that way too and, mm -hmm. and things and so i just reached a point where i'm sitting there with the paper and i'm like why am i still doing this Mm. like there's there like like i could sort of say goodbye to this last piece of the puzzle and do it over here and see how it works and i yeah. uh, you know and i got to see some of them in print and thing and it's mm. like yeah it it yeah. it looks great like i don't i don't see any downside to it so i just kind of mm. i made that that jump but yeah it's it's faster i have uh you know access to all these colors and, and mm. that that was another thing i was kind of at this crossroads where i was like i really want to get more into the color end of things mm. do i buy a copic marker set or do i buy an <laughs> ipad you know and it was i, I went with the ipad <laughs> you buy paints is what you do <laughs> right um, yeah uh, so okay tell me about how do you letter it though so tell me about do you use indesign do you put all indesign and, and make it into the book or? no i mean it's it's hand lettered so i'm just hand lettering oh. on the ipad instead so you're of just using another brush like one of the rapidity graph brushes or i'm, I'm brush using this i'm good. using the same brush i draw with to oh, like really? the same Wow. line that i use to draw the art i yeah. do the, so do, the lettering are you what's the size of your page like are you doing it a full 10 by 15 or you just do print size i, I do or, a print size yeah. okay like, so you're yeah, not like a 600 dpi yeah oh so, but but so, it just in the in, in the process you're blowing it up too though because you're zooming you're, in and zooming you're, out you're zooming in it, so yeah yeah, yeah. but what okay Sorry, all these technical questions, but yeah, I'm sure. fascinated. Uh, why 600 DPI? Why not just 300? Or um, it... just well, what if they want to make an oversized version mm -hmm. at some point? Oh, or okay, what if okay. so what just, if you want to make a poster? poster. Or, what if, okay. Oh, okay. or yeah, okay. what if you want to make a, a billboard of it? Or, okay, so I just okay. I want it. I don't you know I want to I want to draw it like larger than what it needs to be just in yeah. case or or mm -hmm. or an artist edition or something yeah. you know sketchbook yeah, no. or something. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um. And then file size, are you having issues with the iPad cranking through all those all those file size issues or you're dropboxing everything? Yeah, the yeah, file time? size hasn't been, a, yeah, everything gets, yeah, yeah, uh, box or Dropbox and hasn't been an issue. I mean, because it's still like, some... I mean, the, the issues that I've been having with storage are like once I started making videos and things, you know, so people, mm -hmm. you know, people are, are dealing with video all the time. So now artwork, even like print ready artwork is is like nothing compared to that stuff. Well, I know these videos here on yeah. the channel, like a couple gigabytes. I'm like, really? Yes. For yeah. like 15, 20 minutes is a three gigs. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> no, for sure. Was there anything you wanted to say or like promote or talk about? Because then I'll put that in here too. I mean, uh, yeah, I have the Stan Lee. Uh, uh, yeah. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee that's coming out in September. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then also Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, starring Adam Star and the Solar Legion from Image Comics, that's coming out in September, also, um, mm -hmm. in comic book stores. And then um, there's a paperback edition of uh, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, same month. You know, so like wow. all three wow. of these things. Uh, and then I, I also I have a YouTube channel called The Total mm -hmm. Recall Show. Yep. And. Uh, and yeah, but you know, and, and I, I have my Twitter at Tom Scholey and my Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. So great. Let's just strip away comics for just a minute. Let's, comics, let's, yeah. Okay, we're done with comics. Done with movies. Tell me about. I don't know if your family situation, if you have family or not. Uh, but let's let's pretend. Or if if you don't, tell me about like what 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 have you found in your life is the most meaningful thing if we were to pass if we were to kind of leave this earthly coil what are some of the messages that you would love to pass on to the next generation what have you found like mm -hmm. is most important to you 
Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's an interesting question. I because for the longest time, to me, it was like comics. Like I had thought, mm. okay, comics or art, you know, whatever mm. form that takes, you know, cinema, yeah. whatever. But that yeah. that art, that that is how you find meaning in life. That's how mm. your life gets purpose. That's you know, that's that's where you get spiritual sustenance or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you get a lot from it. You do. There's there's no yeah. way around it. But it's it's not it you know it, it's not the end all be all that I thought it was or that I thought it was going to be or that I thought it could be. I I, I it's whatever you get out of that, yeah, you still need something more. And just I mean the pandemic in general just taught me that um that like yeah it's just to be around people. Like you just mm. you know, meaningful, you know, relationships, you know, f- friends, family, like those those like you need those the same way you need, you know, water, that, mm-hmm. you know, that everything else. So, so yeah, just sort of, uh, you know, uh, love the people, love the people in your life and uh, mm-hmm. um, be open to, uh, to, I don't know, like uh, to the moment, you know, you know, just, just like, you know, accepting thing, you know, that this, this present moment that you're in, you know, like, uh, uh, me talking to you, even though it's through this digital intermediary, mm-hmm. like just just appreciate the the opportunities you get to be a a living creature on mm-hmm. planet Earth with other people, and that all the other stuff that you think of as like so important and oh I need to and this you know uh, ladder of career or success mm-hmm. or achievement you know yeah. that 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 stuff is it's nice, but it's it's kind of you know the, the 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 people and it is hard because people can disappoint you, you know, people can, you know, think, you know, you don't have the sort of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's scarier than these like little creative worlds that we have some, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, predictability and, and, and control and power within, but you you just got to accept people as they are and, and accept yourself Mm -hmm. as you are. And, uh, just, um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard because that was, um i was so focused on my art mm-hmm. that that was a, that, that you know all that other stuff is very easy to not you know to to neglect and it's yeah. you know and 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 uh i you know yeah. I, i'm kind of putting more more of my focus and more of my energy in into that but uh, yeah. and and find but you know the creative stuff is still so important you know very important but it's not it's not the end all be all yeah yeah, I mean, human connection, I think, is, I think you said it right there. I, I appreciate that. Great. Thank you so very, very much for your time. It has been wonderful chatting with you and getting to know you, Tom. It has filled my bucket. So I appreciate oh, it. So thank you so very much.